Basically, in the 1970s and early 1980s, roads all over Africa, particularly Africa, were in an absolutely dreadful state as no money was being used for, for road maintenance. It wasn't a priority. Governments had real problems in finding that money. There's an issue of funding, but it, uh, there's also an issue of concept. The concept of maintenance to people looking after rural roads who have a, an interest in the roads being maintained is somewhat different, there's a mismatch. If we look at the funding available for periodic maintenance, it isn't there. And if we actually go to governments and we say, how many kilometres of periodic maintenance did you do? And then you then divide that by the network length. You find that instead of covering the, the network every eight years, they're covering it in 15, 20 years, 25 years, and so on. One of the strategic problems is that rural networks are at the end of the budget line. The big focus is on national highways, provincial roads. So rural networks tend to be at the bottom end of the heap in terms of getting funding. Where there is probably least um, success in the terms of rural road management, I would say is still in the capacity of local authorities to take up effectively the management. The main challenge is that, you know, in, uh, in Africa, uh, fuel levy itself is not sufficient to meet the requirements of all the network, partly because the level of traffic is small, but also the level of fuel levy is also small. These are major breakthroughs in the last 15, 20 years, but mainly at the higher volume end. It's frequently the case where there's a road fund and 40% will go to international roads, 35% go to national roads, 20% whatever it is down to provincial roads. And there's this bland assumption that commune roads or village roads, they'll be looked after by the village or the commune. And the road fund really doesn't impact on many of those. So there is a need to look at how road funds actually go down to the lowest um, level of road. According to my opinion and my experience, the key drivers for successful rural road management or to provide uh, access is the demand from the people and the involvement of the people on the ground. Uh, the second one of course is the awareness of the government departments that the population really demands this kind of access and takes it serious and therefore provides the necessary finances. In terms of capacity building um, at, at local agency area, yes I have been involved we're currently undertaking a project in three or four countries to build up that capacity in a very novel way. And we're looking at the rural road sector in the form of an asset preservation pyramid with five or six building blocks, which we're tackling in a hierarchic order, with the base of that pyramid being policies and politicians, to get the right policies in place before we start tackling the higher order building blocks. So our approach has been to look at policies first, get political support for the correct types of institutions which need to be capacitated, and then look at funding so the institutions can actually um, administer that funding adequately. In terms of capacity building, a very recent and successful intervention I've experienced in Jordan. Rural roads uh, had not been maintained for the last decades in, in Jordan and currently under the influx of Syrian refugees the government is forced to provide opportunities for Syrians and Jordans to take up work. With government support uh, huge programs have been started to improve the uh, local infrastructure but also to provide employment for the refugees but also for unemployed Jordans. Our pilot to engage uh, women at all levels, especially the rural and ethnic minority women to do the rural road maintenance has brought a big impact uh, in Vietnam. And then um, the, pro, the small grant uh, has uh, given chance to the ethnic minority women to have better life, better voice in the family. They spend their salary from the maintenance work to buy books and to have better equipment for the family. 
you know, with performance-based contracts, the idea is that the, the maintenance contractor is employed to keep the road up to a certain level of service. Uh, he, he has to keep the road in good condition, and you have to define what good condition is. And then you pay the contractor a certain amount each month if the road meets the standard. So it doesn't matter what work he has done or not done, he gets paid every month. Is the road performing its, its purpose in providing access? And you can see this when local people go out and start maintaining a road themselves. It usually is doing the minimum amount necessary to get a vehicle through. Whereas an engineer doing maintenance will say, no, no, we've got to have this dimension, these ditches and everything else. Which is quite right in some respects, because if you don't have the drainage system working, it can easily get washed away. But this mismatch is one problem. The responsibility for ultimately being able to, to maintain rural roads must lie with national governments. And they've got to put in place mechanisms for doing so. Very often that's missing. And as is often said, we have to build policies before we build roads.